If you're ready to move out for the first time, then you need to follow this budgeting plan. In this video, we're going to talk about a different 50-30-20 budgeting rule than what everybody else talks about. Mm. But before we get started, if you're new to this channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to click on the bell so you get the notifications when we put out some new videos. And then in the comments below, let us know if you've ever heard of the 50-30-20 rule. So there's this guy named Street Singh. He's got a YouTube channel called Minority Mindset. It's freaking amazing. I love his content. If you've never seen it, you should definitely go check it out. Yeah. If you know what he looks like, he's got the face on um, the picture of this video. You know, he's the third face in there that he's isn't in the, mine. In the thumbnail. Or his. So it's that guy. Find him. It's good. So just Preet's 50, 30, 20 rule is actually really good. It's for young adults who are still living at home or they don't have any real responsibilities yet. Mm. So what it is, the 50% is on spending. I mean, yeah, you're living, living at home, you're young, you're having fun, right? Yeah. Cool. Spend half your money. But the other half your money gets broken down into two different chunks. So you got 30% for investing and then 20% for savings. I like it. I mean, you're going to establish some good financial habits when you're young, if you're only spending half your money and then you're investing or saving the other half. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty hard to do that as an adult unless you have a big income and you live way below your means. But if mm. you're starting out as a kid and you're doing this, it's a, it's a good concept. I like it. So his rule is great. You know, his 50, 30, 20 rule is very good. But if you're trying to move out of your uh, parents' house, we have a couple little tweaks there that we think could make it better for you and your situation. So our version of the 50, 30, 20 rule is gonna be 50% of your money goes into savings short term, right? You're not gonna be able to save that kind of money forever once you actually go and move out on your own and get real bills, but 50% goes into savings, 30% goes into your investing, and then 20% goes into spending because we get it, you wanna have a life, you wanna go have fun. Yeah. So you still need to allocate some money for spending. So it's a little bit different numbers than just spreets, but you're gonna have more money going into your savings because your goal is to move out, and obviously, uh, most people want to move out sooner than later. They want that freedom, and so you got to save up more than 20%. That's how we've allocated 50% in our budgeting method. Um, if, let's go with a real-life example here. Let's say you're living at home, and you're working part-time, and after taxes, you make $1,000, right? That's how much you bring home. So 50% of that in savings is 500 bucks, right? So $500 a month you would put away for moving out, and then... 30% is going to go to some kind of investment, right? Whether that's in Robinhood or you're saving up money because you want to start buying property for real estate or I don't know. I mean, right now you got NFTs. Maybe you're buying or trying to develop some stuff. Maybe uh, you're investing in yourself. Okay, that's a big one. Learning how to do things. That's a good investment. Um, it's super popular right now for like trading cards, baseball cards, basketball cards, comics. I got a buddy that buys comics and resells them and he's making really good money right now. Nerds are loving comics. I can say that I'm a, I'm a giant nerd. But Super nerd. then your last 20%, you know, uh, would be, what is that, out of a thousand bucks, 20%, it's $200 a month you get to go have fun with. Whether that's Ooh. going out and eating or going out and hanging out with your friends or buying stuff or whatever, right? So out of a thousand bucks, 500 goes to savings, 300 goes in, into some kind of investment, and then $200 would go to have fun. Now, again, short-term goal, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, if you're at your parents' house and you're like, man, I really want to move out in six months or 12 months, I mean, then this 50, 30, 20 rule is going to be great for you. I mean, because saving 50% of your money is great and all. I mean, it sounds amazing, but it's just not really, you know, sustainable. You can't do it forever. If you asked me to save 50% of my money for the rest of my life, I'd be like, no. <laughs> but... If you can do it for six months, so you can get out of your parents' house, or 12 months, or even 18 months, I mean, very good. I mean, if you can do it for 18 months, very good. If you need help getting out of your parents' house, I mean, we have a whole video on the 12 steps to move out of your parents' house. It's got a free downloadable checklist that's involved with it, or included with it, excuse me. It comes with all this cool stuff. We have a first apartment checklist that's going to tell you all the things that you're going to need for your first apartment. I mean, we've got all these different resources, so check out the description. That's where you're going to find the links to all of that type of stuff, so make sure you check it out so you can kind of see what you're saving for, how much money you're going to need to be able to move out, and so on and so forth. So the reason why you want to start saving up 50% of your money while you're living at home is you're going to have a lot of stuff to pay for when it comes mm. to moving out. It's expensive. Oh, yeah. And the first thing you want to start saving up for is your emergency fund because mm. life happens and it's definitely going to kick you in the teeth when you're not expecting it. So mm -hmm. at some point, your engine in your car is going to blow 
or you need a new transmission or something, right? Yeah. Life happens. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when it's going to happen. So you want to have an emergency fund because you definitely do not want to put all this stuff on a credit card. Mm -hmm. Now, an emergency fund ideally is at least three months worth of your bills. So for most people, that's like three to $5,000 depending on your bills. I mean, it could be more than that, it could be less than that. But on average, three to $5,000 is what you're going to want to have in your emergency fund before you move out of your parents' house. Once you get your emergency fund fully funded, you're going to want to start saving up money for moving out. I mean, and it's going to be expensive. Like I said earlier, we got videos covering how much that stuff's going to cost and how you can figure that out. But on average, that's going to be about two to $4,000 to move out of your parents' house. I mean, so once you save up your emergency fund, which is going to be three to six months of your expenses, then you got to save up for that move. So all in all, between your first and last month's rent, plus your deposit, plus saving up for stuff for your apartment, and the emergency fund, mm. you're talking probably anywhere from like seven to $10,000 would actually be a good, solid financial foundation to start your adult life with. Yeah, it's a big number. As a recap, the Alex and Philip 50, 30, 20 rule is 50% of your income is gonna go towards savings. 30% of your income is gonna go towards investing, and then the last 20% of your income is left for you to spend however you want it. But remember, once you do move out, you're not gonna be on that 50, 30, 20 rule anymore, nope. okay? Probably any variant of the 50, 30, 20 rule, all right? That's when you're gonna to move to that 70, 10, 10, 10 rule, and you'll be able to live your life knowing that you did the right thing and your money is on track, okay? So, do yourself a favor, save some money, take the time to learn these good money habits now, and you'll set yourself up for success. So don't forget to check out the links in the description. I mean, we're gonna have all of the goodies in there, like the 12 steps to moving out of your parents' house, how much money you need to move out, and your first apartment checklist, plus more. And then, if you like this video, hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe, and in the comments below, let us know if you're gonna use this 50-30-20 rule to get out of your parents' house. And we'll see you in the next video.